Hello and welcome once again to Seneta Newsroom, where you get your weekly dose of container shipping market insights. I am Peter San, Chief Analyst at Seneta. And you know, we offer the world's largest ocean and air freight rate benchmarking and market analytics platform just for you. With over 280 million contracted container and air freight rates data points, Seneta covers 160,000 global trade routes. And that is how we provide the most up-to-date information on freight rate developments every week, also here in Seneta Newsroom. In the case you are joining a Seneta event for the first time, what took you so long? Please follow our LinkedIn page to get notification about upcoming events. If you're working in the shipping industry, you don't want to miss out on this weekly LinkedIn Live series in the current volatile global market. Every week, I bring you crisp and to the point shipping market news and container freight rate trends directly from the Senator platform. So you can anticipate any upcoming changes and disruptions and react and act faster to the ever-changing conditions out there. Before I get on with today's business, please let us know in the comments where you're joining us from and if you have any questions or comments on this show. Also, please join the conversation. If you have, say, other suggestions to main stories of the past week, please don't be afraid. Join the conversation. I have picked my three top choices for main headlines in the global media outlets. So let's get right to it. First up, Ottawa declares a state of emergency as Freedom Convoy protests disrupt capital. I'm sure that many of you in North America have uh, been uh, aware of this issue for, uh, for quite a few weeks now because well, truckers are protesting against Canada's latest vaccine mandate by blocking roads and creating chaos in Canada's capital city. The so-called Freedom Convoy movement that began in late January as a protest against Canadian vaccine requirements for cross-border truckers has developed now, evolved now into a wider ranging protest against public health measures and Prime Minister Trudeau's uh, government. But what this means is, of course, that quite a few US-Canadian border crossings are closed for truckers, impacting particular the trades in agriculture, automotive, and also some livestock businesses. Next, Maersk makes American acquisition. Well, how to spend it when you make a such a such a massive profit, which uh, which in Danish kroners amounts to 117 billion in U.S. dollars. Well, you make your calculation yourself. I'm probably sure you have seen the headlines. And good day to you also, Captain Sandeep, for joining today's newsroom. What does this mean that Maersk is continuing down that strategy of becoming global integrator, trying to offer a different product going forward than just the transportation from one port to another port, but basically going end to end with various offers. I can uh, I can encourage you, if you have time for it, to, to deep dive into the 150 plus pages of uh, annual report that gives you a better understanding of some of the variety in the various products. And you will know that most spot is only for freight forwarders and the twill offering is for all of you small shippers out there which are going directly without anything else than just yourself. But hopefully any such strategy by any carrier out there should not defeat one purpose. It should all bring a better offering to shippers as it should reduce unnecessary handovers, but also, and I quote here, allow for premium and speedy delivery services to ensure that your brand values are intact for the ever critical customer delivery experience. How about that? It only sets you back 
a few million dollars for each box, give or take. But uh, I guess that's how one of the offerings are developing in the current market. And certainly some of that, say, profits are going to be spent at something else than just adding a few more ships uh, when we approach 2023, 2024. And speaking about adding those new ships, that brings me to the main story of today's newsroom. A headline that obviously caught my attention was a 2,756 TEU box ship sets new record fixed for 50 days at $170,000 a day. Wow, that's a lot of money. But I mean, carriers are making even more money. So uh, obviously at the end of the day, someone's got to pay for this. And I guess, well, that's like you and I as a consumer, or it is you as a shipper. But it all relies on the fact that carriers are still eager to expand their business. They are seeking to feed their networks with more capacity, some of which may have been chartered by another carrier in the market. But when you scramble for capacity, you need to go into the uh, charter market as well. Some of you following on LinkedIn have, of course, also seen that in uh, January, only 10 new container ships were delivered to its new owners. We should expect a similar level of container ships to be fed into active service for the month of February, with the month of March to deliver uh, basically what was delivered in the combined month of January and February. So, uh, so more capacity on the way to service your needs as a shipper. But going forward, of course, I mean, what does this actually mean? Well, it could just basically mean also that tonnage providers are finally also getting a better deal with carriers. But above all, this indicates a clear signal from the carriers that high markets will not go away in the first half of 2022 perhaps also a little bit beyond, but we surely know that beyond, say, the first half years moving into the next peak season in Q3, uncertainty persists. And speaking about uncertainty and the seasonality of the market, that brings me basically into uh, the next segment, as regular viewers will know, is the uh, freight markets from our platform. I have singled out a few interesting developments for you this time around, as I will focus not only on the spot market and long-term rates that we deliver to our customers and also to you today, which are not a customer already, but certainly also giving you a little bit extra on the reefers this time around. It is that time of year where reefers, reefers would normally be in season. But then again, we see some delays in that normal produce coming out of South uh, America. So, so, and since it's all connected, well, ripple effects across the globe on this shortly. On your screen now, you see the developments for the short term market in uh, Far East Maine to uh, US East Coast Maine, one of the key trade lanes of the world. You see in yellow here on top. Let me just single out. This is the uh, spot market right now, sitting at around twelve thousand six hundred dollars. On the right hand side here, you have the priority shipment fees. You know, if you are in an urgency and you may be just a little bit late on that booking, this is what you could be asked to pay on top of the base rates, which is uh, singled out here. And this is where the uh, U.S. East Coast market is particularly boiling hot right now in terms of priority shipment fees. If you seek more resilience into your supply chains, check out here. These are the uh, contracted rates uh, for the most recent uh, three month rolling. So this is basically what you should expect to pay if you go into the long term contract market right now for Far East to US East Coast Maine, around $7,200. Going forward, I think this is a boiling red interesting market in the sense that naturally, well, shortly we will have TPM coming up. You can meet Seneda at TPM. We have quite a few good people present on the stage there. But that will all be 
very much about the Trans-Pacific, also for US East Coast, and very much so for the long-term contracts as well. Let's go into uh, the other uh, trade lane that I have singled out for you today, the uh, North Europe to Far East Main. And hey, isn't that normally a backhaul? It is when you talk about dry containers. But as you can see up here, this is 40 foot reefer, high cube. This is one of the busiest reefer trade lanes in the world. Naturally, you find information at the tip of your finger in our platform. You see also, of course, that uh, the long-term contract rates are ticking up by $400 uh, only in uh, early February. So shippers also on this uh, trade, of course, seeking more resilience into their supply chains. And carriers, as we just discussed, are doing whatever they can also to provide you with more offerings, more variety to look into, more options to consider. Should I go for clear spot market? Should I go into multi-year deals? Or should I go, like many of you uh, uh, out there, also play on both horses? So you do long-term contracts for a quarter or, or two quarters, play the spot market on the same at the same time, or anything in between. There are multiple ways of doing this, and we're happy to deliver you the ammunition to basically do this negotiation. If we just scroll down on the platform here, you can also see the, uh, the development in spot rates for uh, the most recent, uh, in this case, basically all of the pandemic years. I've singled out here, 1st January 2020 until today. And you see uh, in the spot market, freight rates are up some 52.5%. Uh, and if you go down to the long-term contracts, you see a clear tendency that uh, there is uh, something uh, going on in terms of the long-term contracts here, up by 96%. Obviously, that is a, from a lower level. So we have a doubling on the long-term contract rates. Right. Moving on to other good stuff on our platform as we now leave the freight rates. Some of you have already seen the block update with the weekly rate update uh, provided for you. And the focus this year, sorry, this week was on the uh, New Year's cheer. That was little to cheer from on spot rates on major trades for shippers. So much for seasonality, huh? Far East to Europe was the only one that delivered a steady decline five years in a row. Normally, Busy, busy, busy going in to, uh, to, to, to January and come February, freight rates tend to fall. But this time around, it was different. Let me give you a little bit of insights into that because you saw already just before on the US East Coast record high priority shipment fees. On the Trans-Pacific going into US West Coast, it seems to me that some of that freight rate, base freight rate now, have normalized some of the emergency surcharges that uh, carriers are uh, putting on top of your bills uh, out there. So, uh, so that is why we have a, a decline in, in priority shipping fees into the US West Coast, whereas we then see a lift up in, in base freight rates. And speaking of, that, uh, of which, basically, priority shipping fees, I've been looking a lot into that in the past week, as it gives a good, solid, actionable insight into the market. I, I would say it's kind of a, a heat map. And I think when you have access to our full platform, there's so much more to see for you in there. Wrapping up here, as we approach the end of today's uh, newsroom, I'm very pleased to see many good uh, questions and comments coming in. I shall get back to you uh, on, on all of those uh, during later today hopefully but let me just wrap up here because the fourth segment and the one that wraps it all up if i were to pick a song that sets the tune for this week this would be it by the end of this month many of you will meet at tpm 2022 fingers crossed it will be for real for container shipping and all of you red hot chili peppers fans out there it doesn't get much more californication than this it's also a chance to finally catch up after a long COVID winter. Though it's still raging in many places, 
life must go on as well. As always, the link is provided for you in the comments so you can check it out after this show. That's all for today. Next week will be different because I will only be back for the February State of Market webinar on 22 February, where we will focus on the ocean freight rates. Please register using the link shared below. But next week, I'm afraid to say, the Senator Newsroom is on holiday. Thanks again for joining me today in Senada Newsroom and sharing your thoughts in the comments and where you're coming from. And a good morning to you also. If you want to know how Senator can help you procure freight like a pro, check out senator.com or mail us on info at senator.com. This is Senator Newsroom and I am Peter Sand signing off. Stay safe and looking forward to meeting you again in two weeks time. Take care.